Hi everyone, this is the Social Studies Center and today we're going to be discovering more about names. Where did they come from? Why do people use them? And why are they important? Can I tell you the story about my name? First, let's go to the day I was born. I am an undiagnosed twin. That means on the day that I was born, my parents didn't know that they were having twins. I was a complete surprise. After my sister was born, I was born 40 minutes later. And unfortunately, I had lost quite a bit of blood and had to be rushed to the nearby big hospital. Because I was unexpected, my parents hadn't planned a name for me. So my mom quickly turned to her ancestors and people who were important to her. I had a great, great aunt and her name was Johanna. And she's important to our family because she showed a lot of courage and had lots of strength. She was able to withstand a lot of challenges in her life. So my mom wanted to name me after her. So she took the name Johanna and changed it into my name, which is now Hannah. I also have a middle name and it's Marie. My father named me, gave me that middle name of Marie because I had a great grandma named Marie and she lived to be very old and he knew that he wanted me to live um, till I was very old as well. So that's how I got my name of Hannah Marie. Let's hear about how some of my friends got their names as Hi well. Hi everyone, my name is Miss Moyle. Uh, I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about my last name. And as you might already know, last names are something that have been around for a very long time. And if you think about it, your last name has probably been around for hundreds of years as well. My last name, Moyle, has also been around for a really long time. In fact, some of the earliest records are found in 1250. That's over 750 years ago. Isn't that crazy? The last name, Moyle, is actually found in a place called Cornwall. It's a place that is southwest of England. And it's actually uh, a name that is a Celtic surname, which means that it comes from the word Mayo, which means actually bald. Wait, does that actually mean that my whole family that came before me was bald? Well, maybe I looked like this. Or maybe like this. Do we look similar? Well, who knows? I'm sure that's not the case. But I do know that I'm glad to have a name that has been passed down for many generations. And people who have been strong, noble, brave, and kind. And I'm just glad to be able to hold this last name as many, many others have been able to as well. Let's, free, let's hear from our other teachers about their last names as well. My last name is Morgan, and that originally started all the way over in Wales. And it started out as the name Moor Cant, and Moor meant sea, and Cant meant circle. So I'm not really sure what that means. It meant sea circle, that could be maybe a lake or an ocean. And then eventually it changed into Morgan. And then I had ancestors that immigrated all the way over to England, and that's where my dad was born. And he came over to where I'm from, Canada, on a boat when he was only four years old. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Selena Beltran Lee. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about my name. Um, my name, Selena, actually comes um, from a famous singer um, during the 90s. My parents loved her and she passed away and they were really sad. And in order to keep her a part of their lives, they decided that they wanted to name me Selena. And something that's really cool about me and Selena is that we both really love to sing. And I feel like that's um, part of what makes me me or helps me connect back to her. Um, the other part of my name is Beltran. That is my maiden name. That's the name I was born with. And um, as I've done research on my name, I found that it actually originated in Spain. Uh, the Spanish, something really cool about them is that they um, were all over at one point. So they used to be uh, in Mexico and they used to be in the Philippines and different places like that. And my family originates from Mexico. And so we find a lot of Spanish names such as Beltran in Mexico, as well as in the Philippines. And so I found that to be really cool, something that um, I never really knew about. And so um, names, they're super important. And 
Each of us has a name. Um, our parents chose our names and someday we might get to choose names for others too. And so we thought it would be a lot of fun to play a little game with you guys. Um, we're going to give you the opportunity to name some animals. And we're going to look at different pictures of animals and we want you to try and come up with a name for that specific animal. Yes, and once you're we're done, and once you guys are done with naming the animals, we're gonna show you the actual names of the animals. So let's go ahead and begin. Everyone grab a piece of paper and pencil. We'll wait just a second for you to do that. <laughs> okay, so we have this little slideshow behind. Um, and as we go through, just give a little thought to it. These pictures are kind of funny. So here we go. So the first one, is this it's actually a type of fish if that helps at all okay hopefully you guys have figured something out for that one we'll go on to the next this one's weird looking <laughs> very weird looking Here's the next one. This one's kind of pretty, actually. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move on to the next one. That does not look like a fish at all. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna see what their actual names are, okay? So go ahead and find the first animal you named and let's see what it actually is named. This animal is called ice cream cone worm. If you guys <laughs> can tell by looking at the picture, I guess it kind of looks like an ice cream cone. At least the bottom one, at for least, sure. Yeah, I mean, so yeah, there's that one. The next one is called red-lipped batfish. I definitely see where they got the red lips from. The next one is Leafy Sea Dragon. And then the last one, let's see if you guys can get this one right. It was Fried Egg Jellyfish. <laughs> so as you can see, all of these animals got their names based off what they look like. And sometimes people also get their names based off of what they look like. My last name is Two. And in Welsh, Two actually means fat man. <laughs> so what you guys are gonna learn about next is the meaning behind last names and where they came from. We hope you have fun. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mrs. Mertz. And I'm Miss Moyle. And we're from the Social Studies Center. And today we're going to be talking and discussing about names and how we got them. But first let's have a little history lesson. Yeah. So long, long ago, during the Bible times, there was people who went by one name. And for example, Adam and Eve, they didn't have a last name. And there's lots of people named John in the Bible too, right? For example, John the Baptist and John the Beloved, they're given these descriptor names to help determine which John was who. So we could people wouldn't get mixed up who was who. So another way we can determine to give people names is through three different ways through family relationships you've probably heard of a lot of people with the last name johnson or something that ends in son for example or geographical or a place such as marsh or the last one is occupational or someone's job maybe but they go by their last name of cook so the first way that some people get their last name is through their family relationship let's look at this picture real fast the man in the blue shirt, he's the father of the little boy in the red shirt. The father's name is Robin, and his son, his name was Nick. But to identify who Nick was, they wanted to give him a last name. So they took his father's name, Robin, and added son, because Nick is the son of Robin. So his name became Nick Robinson, because Nick was his son, 
Let's go on to the next example. And we're going to see if you can figure out what his last name is. If this father's name is Will and he had a son named Jack, do you think you can figure out what Jack's last name is? Let's see if you can figure it out. You're right. Jack's last name is Wilson because Jack is the son of Will. So his name would be Jack Wilson. Here are some more examples of last names that end in son. Surname is also another word for last name. Do you maybe see your last name on this list? There's a bunch of last names that end in son. Another example of how people got their names is by location and geographic. Many, many names also come from people live. For example, if a man named Steve lived near a hill, his last name would be Steve Hill. Another example is if a man named Trevor lived near a cliff, what would his name be? You're right, it'd be Trevor Cliff. Trevor Cliff. Here's some more examples of location and geographic names, such as Marsh, Cliff, Waters, and many more. So another common way that people get, get their last names is through their occupations or jobs that they have. For example, our friend John here is a carpenter. A carpenter is one who works with wood. His last name would be Carpenter. So his full name would be John Carpenter because that's what his job is. Let's see if you can figure out this man's last name. Our friend Ryan here is a blacksmith worker. A blacksmith worker is one who works with steel and fire. Let's see if you can figure out what Ryan's last name would be. That's right, his last name would be Smith. So his full name would be Ryan Smith. Here are some more names, last names that are based off of occupations or jobs like Smith, Garden, Gardener, Mason, Taylor, and Cook. Yeah, and now we're gonna learn for some of our friends who are gonna act out what they're doing for their job. And we're gonna see if you can guess what their last name would be. Hey guys. All right, so upcoming are a couple videos of Miss Morgan and I doing our different occupations. We're gonna give you some clues about what you do, and then it's your job to guess what our occupation is, therefore guessing our last name. Here's the first one. Oh, hey! For my job, I like making stuff a lot. It can be cookies or bread. I have a cookie sheet right here that I often use and I could use things like cooking spray and any other type of baking pan. What's my last name? You're right, it's Baker. For my profession, I normally wear camouflage and I spend my time going through the woods looking for food to provide for my family. These are a few of the examples of some of the animals that I might find. What do you think my profession is and my last name? That's right, Hunter. For my job, I sew. I can sew clothes and pillowcases, and sometimes I even work on suits, which are really fancy. What could my last name be? Yup, it's Taylor. For my job, I spend all my time next to rivers and even oceans. Sometimes we use boats, and I use net and a fishing rod. What do you think my last name is? It's Fisher. to work here. I also have a, a couple pictures of the tools that I often use while I'm working, okay? So I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Then I'm going to have you guys guess what my last name is based off of my job, like we've already talked. We have this cane or a crook or even a hook. Got some trusty work boots. I need those. I walk a lot in my job and I often I can have a dog. I love my dog. He's, he's the best companion. He's really good at his job. All right, guys, what is my name based off of my job? You're right, Shepherd. My last name is Shepherd, and I herd sheep for a living. Good job. 
Hey guys, thanks for playing. That was really fun. I bet you did really well too. Now, while none of those were my actual last names, you might recognize mine. My full name is Rachel Ray. Coincidentally, there is a famous chef who shares the same name, Rachel Ray. Now, I wasn't named after her. My parents waited over 10 years to have another girl so that they could name me Rachel. But it is pretty funny sharing the same name as her because I get to hear all the jokes about it when I meet new people. But about my last name, when I was researching it, I was able to follow it all the way back to the 1300s. And I had a lot of family living in England, the Suffolk County specifically. Here's a map of that. Now over here in the left corner, the, the dark purple one, that's where all my family was. You might be wondering, Miss Ray, why are you wearing a crown? Well, it's because one of the possibility, possibilities for having the last name of Ray was acting in a kingly manner. See, in Old French, R-E-I translated to king. And so some people think that the name Ray was given to those that acted kingly or like royalty. One of the other ideas was the Old English translation, which was female roe deer or just roe deer. They thought that maybe those with the last name of Ray were fast runners or shy. I could see either of those, well, maybe not the fast runner ones, but I like to think that my family was just very regal in their actions. Hello everyone, I miss Two. My last name is Two, which comes from a village, the village Great Two, which is in Oxfordshire, England. The surname has been established in Ireland since the 16th century. My name is very powerful to me. It is who I am. My name gives me a sense of belonging. It connects me to the past, where I am from, and who I'm related to. My name connects me to my ancestors and what they have accomplished in the past. This makes me very proud to have my last name. My name is a part of me and it is who I am. We would like to invite you guys to discover the meaning behind your last name and your first name and any name that you might have yes <laughs> and so we have a few invitations that we have made for you guys so for all you younger kids we want you to ask your parents why they gave you your first name and why why do you like your first name or if you don't like your first name what would you have chosen and for you older kids we want you to research your name they have a bunch of different sources online that you can look at but a really good one is family search um that's where I was able to research my own name. But find out where the origins of your name comes from and what it means. And we know that as you do this, that it'll be a lot of fun and you'll be able to learn more about who you are and where your family comes from. Okay, so we're on this main page. And as you click on activities here, we have surname, surname origins. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that. And you can enter a name here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and type in um, my maiden name, which is Beltran. And we're going to go ahead and search my name. So it gives you a few different things. It talks about the characteristics of that name, as well as um, what it means or um, a different abbreviation for it. Um, it also tells you where the name my name specifically, Beltran, is most likely to be found. And we see that's in Mexico, Spain, and Colombia. So these are just some options for you to look at um, as you begin researching your name.